So we've alluded to this a couple of times, but you've been diagnosed with bipolar. So what was the process and the journey to get to that point? Being diagnosed, I, I was I was diagnosed eventually with, with bipolar and ADHD. At 27? Yeah, it's about that. 2011, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, it's before then. Was it? Yeah, because I went in, I've been in a priory twice of it. Right. So the first time, I, I always knew it was something a little bit strange with me as if, from ever since I, I can remember memories of, like what I spoke about earlier, fitting in school and not fitting in and fitting in with people and not fitting in. Um, I didn't fit in with with many things. But when it all comes ahead was, I think it was 2009, I got a scaffolding company to put scaffolding around my house. And I knocked, and this is no no exaggeration, I knocked the back wall off of my house, like put props up. Um, and I literally knocked the back, back of my house off. Um, I started taking the roof off. And this happened in a real short space of time. And my manager at the time, he said, what, what, what the fuck are you doing? I went, oh, I'm having an extension. He goes, James, you can't have an extension. I said, why is that? He goes, you've got no plan of mission. You spent most of your money. What are you going to do it with? And I went, I'm just going to do it. And that was at the point where I was just, I'd just gone off. I wasn't even in this world, world or world, worldly. Th I wasn't. I wasn't thinking. wasn't thinking. And who like, took you to where you needed to go to be able to be properly evaluated? Um, my dad, which is my dad never... Me and my dad aren't like that, so I wouldn't didn't want to go to the to anywhere. And then I, after people talking to me for for a long time, like probably two or three hours, they managed to convince me that if I'm not going to go to there, will you go to the priory? And I didn't know what it was, and I said, okay, I'll go. And then just as I was about to go, I said, no, I'm not going. And then my dad just said to me, can I take you? Yeah. And I was like, um, I try, yeah. Um, yeah, and I was, um, so yeah, I got in the car with my dad and I went there and I just said, this is a load of, load of crap in it along those lines. And he went, I said, what do you think? And he went, I just want my son back. And that was, yeah, that was, um, the beginning of a journey. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. That was, um, yeah, that was when, but then when I got there. It was like a relief because then I knew there was something that wasn't quite yeah. right. And I knew there was an answer to it. It wasn't me just being awkward or, which I am very awkward, ask anyone that knows me. It wasn't just that. It was, there was a reason for me being like I was. And as soon as that was discovered, it was like a massive weight off my shoulders. There's nothing wrong with being awkward. I'm a fully paid up member no. of the awkward squad myself. Yeah. yeah. So no, no problems there. Yeah. So yeah, that was, that was, that was how it, how it all come to light. And it was probably the best thing I ever did. Probably the best thing I've did because by now I would have ruined every because you know where you're going and you know why had. you're going that way. Yeah, you? and I know yeah. why I'm doing it. And I, 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 people can help me. People can help me now, and I can help myself. Which that's yeah. the biggest thing: helping yourself. Absolutely. Like, rather than just burying your head in the sand and just carry on being as you are, you can kind of catch light, and you think I'm in a dark place. And when you catch that bit of light, you think that, that's why I'm doing this, and I know what to do, mm -hmm. rather than going right down. Hope and mechanism. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you love the sport? Are you in love with it? I'm not as in love as it as I once was. That Why? Is for sure. Everything's changed. In know? what way? Uh, the players have changed. The organisation's changed. The game's changed. Um, some ways for, for the you've better. Got, you've got to expand Yeah, yeah, that. of course. Yeah. Go, um, tell me. I think some of the players like seem to have this I should be here attitude as well. And that, that was a sense never, of entitlement. It's, yeah, I guess a sense of entitlement. But isn't that, some of them. isn't that, doesn't that come with sport full stop? Look at footballers. I mean, you must, I mean, I know you're not a football fan. There's always fan. been footballers and there's always been dark players. Sure. But you're, you're almost drawing a parallel between an attitude yeah. in, in young athletes now that are getting a lot of rewards and a lot of recognition. And I want to talk to you in a second about the recognition in darts because people are describing you guys as potential rock stars. Mm. I'm not sure I concur with that, but we can kick that you around should. in a second. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll have that catch out in a minute. But what, I mean, this, this sense of entitlement, expand upon that. I, I guess that's my word. You're um, talking about their attitudes. I just, I just think we're all a little bit more humble a few years ago. Um, a little bit more. Well, don't uh, sound, like that, don't sound like it, but some of the things perhaps, you've got up to. Perhaps that's why, why the game's moved on. Well, it is why the game's moved on. And it's hard for someone like myself to change, change my outlook as much as it has changed and to change the way I perceive the game and the way I perceive players. We talk about mental health because it's something that's very prevalent in society now. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think it's used 
as an excuse for situations. Sometimes I think the mental health card is played when someone's put 100%, under pressure. Hundred percent. Right? And I wanted to talk to you about the difference between that situation. I have difficulties in my life. You know, I have um, ADHD at times, or not at times. I have it as a matter of course, and I, I think it's a superpower, quite frankly. At times. At times. <laughs> um, and, and you know, and I've had panic attacks. Yeah. But we're in the same space about talking about the mental health card being played. But in your situation. You you were diagnosed with bipolar and ADHD yeah. and and ADHD as yeah. well, um, and so bipolarity. Talk to me a little bit about that, how it affects you and how it affects your ability to compete. Because from my understanding, having had a, I had a very high profile girlfriend that suffered from bipolarity, and I saw the swings and I saw the lows and I saw the highs and I saw the management of both. Mm -hmm. Right, you being a professional sports person having to deal with that, that's got to be some kind of challenge. Talk, talk to me about it, how it plays out in your world of being a professional dance player and being at the very top of the tree. I will explain how it hinders me and how it helps me. Yep. Obviously, ADHD gives you super, I get like intense. Super focus. Super, yeah. yeah. I, I basically, I get intense focus and I can, I can obsess with things for four or five days and I will know more about it than most people, but then I drop it. Um, and then the bipolar can put me in the best moods Ever. I can spend money that I shouldn't spend. I can make decisions that I shouldn't make. Or I can be contemplating suicide. And I've tried it quite a few times. Um, not very good at it because obviously I'm still here. Good. Um, you have to make a joke of it, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> but no, and all those join, joined up. Sometimes they really compliment themselves. If I'm like in a hyper mood and I'm super focused, my darts is, I, I still know to this day when I'm in the right space, there's, there's, I'm hard, very, very hard to beat and I yeah. can win anything. Um, but when they're both bad, I'm feeling down about things and I've got the crowd against me and my, my ADHD is making me jittery because I'm going flitting from thing to thing. Then that's that's because you're that's, you're going, you, that's you, no good to me whatsoever. You've said obviously. yourself you go into competitions or tournaments knowing mm. as a result of this that you have no chance of winning, yeah. So I'm assuming the flip side of that applies, then, doesn't it? Yeah, and when I, I know when I'm, I know I've, yeah. I've you know I haven't won, well I've won more than most, but when I know I've known when I'm going to win stuff. I know, I know when it's going to happen because I just feel all right, you know. I just feel good and I feel happy. But I also walk into matches thinking, Jesus, I just want to go home. I don't want to be here. I can't stand anyone. I just want to go home and shut my door and hide away. And and that's that's awful. And there's nothing worse than when you lose to a player. And, and there's no way for you to overcome in the middle. Of, and there's no, no way for you to deal with I've that. There's no, no way for you to be able to control I've yourself tried. in that game to be able to even to a lesser opponent, as someone that shouldn't really actually be carrying your darts. Not not when you're up there and it's all against you. Yeah. It's just you just become like I I just have this spiral in my head that just 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 gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then I implode. Because you come onto this music, don't you? You come onto Dizzy Rascal Bonkers. I used right? to, yeah. I did that to make and, fun and, of myself and before and anyone else. People could. don't like it, do they? They push back on it. Yeah. What was when you got that sort of, um, I think, moral judgment from people mm. who don't perhaps understand the reasons behind I, it? What was your sort of feeling about that? Because you, you, obviously you, you just said you do it because you wanted to send yourself up. First of all, I, I remember I played a game. I think it was against, might have been against Phil Taylor or something. And I'd just come out of the Priory and... There was a couple of people in the front of the crowd that had nutty Jane, nutty Jane. It was just some stupid stuff, you know. Yeah. But because I was in a little bit of a pre precious yeah. mood, yeah. I was saying to security, oh, get them out, get them out. And they wouldn't do it. So then I thought, I stewed on that for a couple of weeks. and Because I, I thought that was wrong that them being allowed to do that. I, I personally thought that was wrong. And I still think that's wrong now. Probably, it's, it was probably over 10 years ago now. So now if it was seen, they probably would do something about it, the security, if they want to or because they should be seen to do that it would probably be a lot different the way it was handled that's my little dig there <laughs> <laughs> but then i thought how 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 do i do this so people don't take take the mickey out of me and it, i found it upsetting so i thought i'm going to come out to that bonkers song and i did that and i thought if i do that then no one else can yeah. stupidly and i thought if i do that no and then well, like after never, a couple never of weeks, do it James. i just thought what an idiot it's it's a good logic right because <laughs> once upon a time when i owned the football club that i owned i used to have this reputation i lived in spain and everyone used to say i was permatan pillock or whatever they wanted to say about me so i thought it'd be really cool to say um the future's bright the chairman's orange right yeah. and i thought that would get away from it yeah. right so then people say that it doesn't bother him could call him an orange and it was the worst thing i could ever do because every time i came to a game some bastard sprayed himself orange and had a whole segment <laughs> of the fan base 
sprayed orange like the Tango Man. <laughs> so I thought it was cool. So we're in the same space there, yeah, right? They're yeah, trying yeah. to overcome it by saying, yeah. I don't worry about it. 